it's a tough one, right? Because you're coming back to have that experience, but the first, the, the last fight you had here was so special and so amazing. Do you have to kind of put that out of your mind? So do you just think like, oh, I don't have to live up to that last one. I just got to focus on what we're doing this Saturday. A hundred percent. That's been an elbow means fuck all on Saturday, doesn't it? it that's not going to win me the fight. Um, living off the last fight, but what it has done is give me the the belief, and it's give me the 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 mental fortitude more to come into this one and and know really what I'm capable of. I think you all may have seen it last last time we was here. I was calm, I was collected. I have my odd, odd little jokes and my swear words here and there, but I'm really finding my feet within um, the UFC now and I just want to show consistency and I just want to show... Look, I'm fighting someone who I've actually got a reach on, so I don't actually have to force a fight for a change. I'm going to be able to stick and move and just have a good go. When you look at this fight, is that how you see it playing out? You being able to keep her at length? <laughs> well, if I can sometimes keep someone with a 10-inch reach, I think if I've got a 1-inch reach advantage on someone, then um, then I, I can imagine it's going to happen. I see the fight going one or two ways. She's either going to come and try and clinch me against the cage or she's going to run. Um, her style is quite counter-striking off the back foot. Um, and I'm prepared for... For all of it, I mean, I fought Talia Santos on the wall. I fought Gillian Robertson on the floor. I fought Laura Prop Copley on the floor. I'm very much now accustomed to them fights. I've made the what's the word? The correct. Um, we've tidied up in places and we've worked hard. And after the last fight, I got to go away to San Diego, and I trained with Jay Flo, just like our Patrick did the time before. Uh, got to go back to some judo and uh, and stuff that should um, nullify his strengths. Mm -hmm. Your teammate Paddy's fighting on the card as well. Mm. What have you made of the twerking talk going on with him and Jordan? Oh, fucking hell. Um, I don't know, he's just trying to sell a fight. I appreciate anyone who likes to express themselves and show, them, show just who they kind of are, but... Um, if Jordan thinks he's going to twerk in that, in, I was going to say that echo, in that row two, he's got no chance. I think there's more chance of Paddy teabagging him mm -hmm. than that happening. Like, this is what's back and forth, back and forth. Paddy's going to teabag him, like, on whatever game it is, Fortnite or Call of Duty or something, I don't know. Um, but, I don't know, let boys be boys and just play. Jordan also questioned, he, he said, oh, the fight will be at nine o'clock. How drunk can they really be by then? Is the... Is that a real question for me? Um, I don't know. I'll probably be half a bottle of Howler head down, spinning around the uh, the O2 by then. But I think, look, at UFC London. The fans are coming from everywhere. Half of Liverpool, well, most of Liverpool will be in the uh, Manchester for um, Tom. And um, I just think the the atmosphere may be more than the last time. So to the to the foreign fans just embrace it because it's the foreign fighters just embrace it our fans don't mean any malice but they get behind their own who's next hiya boss how you doing um i know you said you can't take that elbow with that spinning elbow into the cage with you this weekend but talk to us about what that did for you your confidence your career your exposure within the wider mma world because it was a it was a huge moment right it kind of blew up, didn't it? The internet kind of blew up off that elbow. And for me, it just solidified I'm, I am who I say I am. And prior to the UFC, I had finishes and really nice ones with my hands. And this time, I just got that moment where everyone got to really realise, fuck, that is, that is what she's about. So moving forward from that, sometimes in a loss, you have to take more lessons. But in that win... I think I learned more lessons than the, the previous losses that I've had. I've went away and I've worked so hard on my grappling. Um, even though it was the striking that won me the fight, I just want to keep on evolving and keep on getting better as a mixed martial artist. And I think I'll just reiterate what I said before. Like, my feet are, are permanently cemented into the floor. It's not gone to my head. Um, I've gone from the I just want a bevy girl to the elbow girl and um, I wonder what we'll get on Saturday night what I'll be next I know you're someone who will always fight with their heart on their sleeve but how much has being able to fight more with your head in the last few fights been a game changer for you? Yeah I think you can all probably see me progression as a mixed martial artist and my fight IQ has risen 
I think Paul Rimmer, Adam Ventry, Ellis Hampson and Joseph McNally have really started to calm this, even though I know in the fight the the tempo is is a lot and it's it's fast. Um my decision making in that last fight I think was, was spot on and, and the fight before against Kim I'm making the correct decisions instead of shooting for a takedown when I shouldn't. I've just took my time and if the fight's the pace is too much, I've took it down and slowed the fight down and um this fight my opponent will bring um lessons to me that I think I've already passed. Um but I think I'm gonna be able to pass with flying colours this time. Final one from me. Looks like you're having the time of your life right now. You know, everything's everything's going absolutely superbly for you. But this is the toughest sport on the planet, right? And the minute you take your eye off the ball, you get humbled real quick. So how how have you managed to balance all of this with the the, the increased exposure, the fact you're much more famous and you know your career is on, on the up and up, but think, while also keeping your feet firmly on the floor? I think notoriety and all of that kind of thing means fuck all. Um, I've learned that none of it's real. Do you know what I mean? Just because I can go out and more people know my name doesn't really change me as a person. It doesn't change my life. It doesn't change my family's life. Like Liverpool's got a really good way of sometimes keeping you humble. Like I walk in that gym every day and get humbled by my training partners, my mum, my family, my girlfriends, everyone. I'm I'm the butt of the joke all the time. Do you know what I mean? Just because I fight, it doesn't mean anything. Um, I, I've tried to be more of a role model and less of just the bevy. Eh? <laughs> I've tried to drink less and do more for my community since getting more notoriety. So I think that always keeps you humble. And um, through all of this journey and through everything and through the last fight, I've just realised I just want to be a world champion. I just want to be a world champion again. And um, I can't look too far in the future, just have to take every day and every fight as it comes. But like I say, I can't live off that performance forever, can you? You need to make sure that the next one outdoes that. However, the, the finish may not ever outdo that last one. Um, the fight in IQ and the decision making should and will. Brilliant, thank you. M M Molly right here. Hi. Hi. Um, you know, when people talk about that event in March and many fans and just pundits saying that was maybe the best fight night, if not arguably one of the best events ever in the US. Definitely UFC. was, lad. Definitely was. She's about to be there, but it definitely was. Well, uh, my question is, uh, when you're you, when you're next up, you s you've seen, you know that the English and the European fighters are doing well. How much did that affect you, whether it be confidence, whether it be pressure or anything else in your energy? All Molly McCann needs is a crowd. That's all I need. Um, I couldn't do COVID. I couldn't do... I was fortunate enough to go to Fight Island and be treated like an absolute queen over in Abu Dhabi. I was fortunate enough to fight in the apex um, while still in the bubble. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't lift myself up to that kind of atmosphere. There was none. Um, you give me 50 drunk fans and I'll still give you the fight of my life. But listening to that O2, being in that changing room when me and Patrick was getting ready and we was watching it before we left, whilst we was on the way. And every near enough, every GB fighter was getting the finishes and getting the wins and you could just feel the momentum and the momentum was building. And the second I heard my walkout tune and just looked at everyone and it was massive for me to see I hadn't won in the COVID. So to walk out and that many people be cheering for me and wanting me to win really, really blew me away. And then I had said the whole fight week and the whole fight camp, this is for yous. I understand like how long yous have waited. It's as long as we've waited for this fight, this fight night back in London. And I just knew, I knew what I was ready to give. And, and I know it'll be a similar case on Saturday. Do you feel that the European fighters have some pressure going into this one? Because the last one was so good, it's almost like, oh my gosh, everyone has to deliver again. And you're only responsible, obviously, for your own fight. But do you feel like collectively there is a bit of that kind of energy going into this? I think as long as you don't let the ego run away with yourself after wins, like what we've all managed to do. And um, Tom Aspinall is like a really good um, example of it. Good win, good win, good win. Doesn't let him run away. Doesn't add pressure to him. He just gets on with his job. I think as long as you're focused, I don't think there's any more 
added pressure. From that last fight, my life completely changed in terms of sponsorship. I don't have to go into a fight now worrying about what if I lose, I'm only going to get half. Would that even cover six months, like rent and bills and all that kind of stuff? I get in there and I feel like a diamond's created, like pressure creates diamonds and I'm ready to just keep on creating. So will I feel the pressure now? Will I feel nerves of having a fight? 100% who doesn't? Um, I'm just ready to have a go, to be honest, mate. My final question. Are you the only teammate who's allowed to call Paddy Patrick? Well, it's his fucking name, so I don't know why no one calls him. Um, do you know how many trolls I get online from the Americans where they go, why are you calling him Patrick? I'm like, that's his name, that's why. Um, I don't know. He just calls me the meatball and I just call him Patrick. It's been that way since he had braces and I was working at Subway. Thank you. Molly, you mentioned obviously about your life changing, about financially not having to worry going into a fight. How does that affect you mentally, not having that kind of pressure about I need to win this in order to pay my bills? I think most people who watch the sport and most people in here love what they do. And sometimes everyone's thinking, oh, am I going to make it to the end of the month? Because sometimes you're not getting paid like a lot, a lot. Do you know what I mean? Um, I wouldn't say... I've got outrageous amounts because there's probably half the card in more than what I earn, but just not having the extra. When you're going to a fight and you're in camp, you just want to be thinking, I'm going to improve there, I'm going to get better there. I think when you start having to think about money and survival post-fight, it can just be detrimental to your thought process. And when I'm in the, the cage, if I'm in a compromising situation, I want to be thinking, stop here, passing, stop the arm, stop the elbow. I don't want to be thinking, fuck, if she moves here and I'm over, I'm not going to be able to pay me bills. And um, I've been really fortunate that Barstool's come in, um, give me a sponsorship deal where I'm, I'm comfortable to just give my whole self and to training. And I think every fighter does. By hook or by crook, we all find a way to make it work, whether you have to have two jobs outside of it. Everything that you do, you'll always give your best to it. But I just feel like I'm just I'm, I'm in a position now where I can just ultimately give my whole self to every training session. And instead of having to go and do other stuff, I can just put the Norma Tech on and recover. I can go for a cryotherapy. I can go for a walk with my dog, Frank, and just relax and take in the sun that's not really ever in Liverpool do you know what I mean but um, it's it's harder in some ways because you're probably more broken because you're training harder and you give them more um, but it's that there's less pressure which is better you know we you mentioned about you know being more grounded being very calm focused and we definitely saw that before your last fight as well you know how much of a difference does that make in, in your performance when you are kind of mentally grounded, mentally focused? How much does that affect the way you perform? I feel like mind, body and soul, when it's all together, you get the best performances of your, of your career. And you can see it when, like, Conor McGregor, you, could, you can see when he was at that same flow and he had those amazing finishes. And then when he was being a bit... I don't know, like, whether to say, like, manic or, like, a little bit everywhere, probably because he was feeling the pressure a little bit that the the fights don't always go the way that you want them. So, um, for me, it has just been really important just to make sure that I keep my feet on the floor and just... Yeah, I forgot your question halfway through. Sorry, I've had a long day. How, how, does, it's okay. how does that affect your performance when oh, you're... It, it yeah. affects my performance in a positive manner. Um, I was saying 2019, I came to fight um, Zombie Girl, was it? Priscilla Cachoeira. And I remember sitting here and I was just taking it all in and I was so fucking scared. And I couldn't eat all week. I didn't even have to do a salt bath or anything because I was that nervous. My energy was so drained, but I was still able to give the performance of my life. So when you're not constantly drained, you can just give more. If if you're in the if you're in the cage and you're punching and you're not on the back foot already in here, mm. you just your recovery is better and you you're thinking better and your combos just come together and you're more alert and you can see. So um yeah, I think it's really it's a real positive. <laughs> And, you know, when you think about the fight this Saturday, how do you envision it? How do you see it going down in your head? 
I think most fighters have their their moments and their zen like flow and Paddy will probably be when he's like rapping and on the mat and he's giving it minds when I'm going for me run or when I'm walking to the gym and I'm warming up and I have my music in my head and I just constantly think like I'm going to command the center of the ring of the cage sorry and I'm just going to go and do me and I'm not going to force the finish the finish will come I haven't got to force a win and I do feel and I have envisaged and in training it's all mirroring together that I will get the finish um, whether it needs to be a grapple and a submission or whether it's going to be a striking um, finish. I think every single person who's been around me, who's been in camp, who's watched me this week can just tell something special is coming. So Dan Hardy said to me, off the back of that last fight, is kind of like three wins. I went, what do you mean, lad? And he went, just in here, you'll just be a different animal and you can kind of carry the momentum and the self-belief moving forward. So I believe that's where I'm at. Thank you. No problem. Molly, just in terms of um, you and Paddy going global from Liverpool, how does that actually feel to represent Liverpool and to just go global with <laughs> your best mate? Um, it's a bit of a mad one, to be honest, because I think in the summer, um, Graham Boylan managed to do a really good job for me to, for, to go from like New York to Phoenix to San Diego, and I got to go and train and do loads of like, public... Like, meet and greets and fucking all mad podcasts and meeting all just amazing people and I remember sat I always say this there's a song I think it's called Oh What A Night and me and Paddy always sing it and we was driving to Six Flags from San Diego so we was going to a theme park and I looked at him and I looked at his fiance Laura and I turned it up and I went never forget this moment and he was like what do you mean I was like this song this moment we're like we're kids from Liverpool who grew up a council estate with nothing and we're just out here living I suppose you could say best life but just everything we've worked for and the good thing is we epitomise being a Scouser um, and some people might not like it but I know everyone back home is proud of us um, because we just try and be honest we try and just tell the truth, we try and be funny and we try and give paying customers and working class people what they deserve when they're paying and when they're watching and at the end of the day it's prize fighting, it's gamesmanship and sportsmanship and you want to see it all so we try our very best to give that to everyone. So back in Mark back in March, sorry, a Paddy was taking the mick out of you for Everton, maybe going down and Liverpool winning everything. Now Liverpool didn't win the Champions League and the Premier League. You stayed up. You were at Goodison Park celebrating. <laughs> that must have been mega. Um I think I think it was BT put it out there, didn't they half the world see me like scale. I was like in the main stand up a tier, managed to jump down, hang down into someone's box. I was like, Love, can I get down there? She's like, Yeah, getting ready to catch me. I got onto that field. I was with Deli Ali, Seamus Coleman, Frank Lampard. I got to them all. And um, I had flares. I had all like blue in my hair for I don't know how long. I had to do a UFC Connected interview the next day and I had no voice left and my hands were still blue from the flares. But um, what a good time that was to be an Evertonian. Um, I got taken the piss out of quite a lot for, for how much we celebrated staying up. But... Those who don't understand just don't matter. And Paddy was going, I hope you go down, I hope you go down and all that. And you remember this time, last time I was here, I was giving it to the Everton players because I was like, you need to play for the badge and play for what it means. And it, and they did. And um, when Liverpool lost the league and when they lost the Champions League, I didn't need to gloat or I didn't need to rub it in Paddy's face because... Like Everton haven't won nothing, but it was um it was bittersweet, like because there was a little bit of a yes in there, but um yeah, they're still made. I have got a an Everton poster in the changing room, a flag, and he goes get that fucking down before he walks in. So just got two more for you, Molly on, Tim from Sports Kita here. Um, how is it adjusting back to normalcy after such a high in the last fight night? Um, or is it still going on? I don't, I'm Molly McCann, nothing's normal in my life, nothing's ever been normal in my life. Um, I felt more at peace, in all honesty, since all of that, because I think if you feel fulfilled and have lived up to your potential, I don't feel like I'm touching my potential yet, but I'm like, I'm, I'm showing steady growth towards where I need to be. Um, 
then it's all good. I think the hardest part is learning to say no and not giving too much of myself to everyone else, which in this fight camp I've also learned to do. Um, I have done nothing but eat, sleep and train. I've probably done two media obligations the whole camp because I haven't tried to um, lose track and lose focus. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And if I'm honest with my goals and my dreams and my ambitions of being a world champion, then I can't run away, like I keep saying. That elbow will go probably get sketched on me gravestone do you know what I mean and, <laughs> and me, me I just want a bevy lad like, quote will be there but um, it doesn't mean anything in all honesty and last one for you you want to work towards a world title you said is there someone in the top 10 a name that you want to call out I've never been one to call anyone out um, I gave it the big I am against Gillian Robertson and she humbled me my humble the best lesson of my life so I learned I don't need to do that because <laughs> I failed at the first hurdle on that one. But um, I'm going to get this win. Dave Portnoy from Barstool is around and Dana and him are quite tight. So hopefully after the fight we can have a conversation. And um, I would like to fight again in November uh, in the Mecca of all Mechas for strikers. And I'll just leave it into their hands to see who I'll be fighting against. Oh. Hey Molly, just one from me. Um, with Cage Warriors just around the corner, I wondered who's the next uh, fighter from your gym, next gen, who can make the jump to the UFC? There's not one. There's a few of us. Um, I think me and Patrick will be going to watch after the weigh-ins because our boys are on the prelims so that we can all get a scram together and, and enjoy the Friday night. But you've got Nathan, you've got Luke Riley, um, you've got Adam Cullen, you've got... Um, I don't really wear makeup, do I? I've got mascara in my eye and it's stinging. That'll teach me. Um, what's my lad from Warrington called again? Nick, what was our middleweight world champion called? His name's just completely gone from my brain. No. Oh my God. Yeah, Bonnie. Sorry, I've had so much going on. Matt Bonnet, I'm really sorry for that one, lads. Um, all of these are ready, um, and they'll be ready for world titles and cage warriors before we move forward. But it's really nice to step on the mat now when you're in the presence of people who are levelling you up. I, The last day of my training camp, I got in a taxi on the way to the gym, and he went, fucking hell, girl, you look like shit. I went, well, do you want me to be looking fresh as fuck at the end of a fight camp? Because I was like, if that's the case, then I'm not training with the right people, am I? I mean, they're not hating me, don't get me wrong, but I've, I'm giving me like life to the to the camp. But um, <laughs> next time, there's the world, and, and soon we'll be making the O2 just a club show.